Welcome back to another Military History Uncovered video. Today we are going to be talking about the Battle of Stalingrad, which, incur which occurred from um, 1942 to 1943. Now I know I haven't been doing uh, videos in about 10 months, so this is going to be um, a little bit of, you know, seeing how many views I can get. Um, just, a, you know, a test run video. So let's get into it. So what we're going to be talking about in this video is um, commanders on the Russian and German side. Um, equipment used on both sides, casualties on both sides, units involved um, if the Germans won, um, the whole battle, and then we're going to have a uh, conclusion sum up um, that tells us, you know, kind of like what happened and, you know, what could have happened if they, um, if they won. Okay, so first the German commanders. So on top of everybody, we had um, Friedrich Paulus, who was, you know, he was a field marshal. Um, then we have Eric von Manstein, W.F. von Reichdoffen, Walter Heitz, um, and then for the, um, the allied countries of Germany, we had two from Romania, one from Italy and one from um, Hungary. Now for the Russian commanders, um, we had Georgi Zukov, Nikolai Vranov, A.M. Vas Vasilevsky, Vasily Chukov, Nikolai Vatutin, K.K. Rukosovsky, Andrei and Andrei Yeri Yominko. So now for the equipment on both sides. So let's start with the Germans. For their initial strength, they had 270,000 men, around 500 tanks, 3,000 artillery, and um, 600 aircraft. Versus the Germans, I mean versus the Russians, uh, 187,000 men, 400 tanks, 2,200 artillery, and 300 aircraft, which seems to give the Germans, you know, a lot more uh, strength versus the Russians. Then by the counteroffensive time, the Russians have about a million more men, or a hundred thousand more men than the Germans do. They also have a couple hundred more tanks than the Germans do, um, a couple thousand more artillery, and they have a couple hundred more aircraft than the Germ uh, Germans do. Which, you know, at the initial strength, Germany leads, but by the counteroffensive, Russia leads. Which, you know... Germany still probably could have won if they would have made a couple less mistakes than they actually did in the real battle. Okay, so now for casualties on both sides. So the Germans incurred about 850,000 casualties versus the Russians over 1.1 million. Um, along with uh, Russia lost 2,700 aircraft um, destroyed, um, 4,300 tanks destroyed, and 15,700 artillery destroyed, but the Germans, having less equipment and less troops in the invasion than Russia had in their whole military, they um, lost 900 aircraft destroyed and 745 captured, along with 1,500 tanks destroyed, 1,600 captured, and 6,000 artillery destroyed, plus almost about 6,000 captured. So that's why I think this battle was really the, you know, the turning battle of the war, because Germany lost too much, you know, they lost too much supplies, they lost too much, you know, oil for their uh, tanks, aircraft, they lost, you know, too many men, they, could, they couldn't do other offensives, and they lost too much equipment, they lost like half their equipment, and, you know, I mean, Hitler had been sending so much equipment and resources there, and troops, and now he just lost like all of it, so that was pretty much his whole force that he lost there. Okay, so units involved on Germany side, they had the 6th Army and the 4th Panzer Army. And then on Army Group Dawn, they had the 6th Army, 4th Panzer Army, and 1st Panzer Army. So they had two regular armies and three Panzer Armies. The Romanians had two armies, or no, three armies. And then Italy had one army, the 8th Army, and Hungary had the 2nd Army. Now on the Russian side, they had pretty much five armies, the 28th. 
67th, 62nd, and 64th. And then on the uh, Soviet Union Don front, which I guess would be up against Army Group Don, they had three armies. And then on the Southwestern front, they had a Guards Army, Tank Army, and uh, another regular army. So now we're going to be looking at if the Germans would have actually won the battle. So the first thing is that they would have um, they would have kept a lot of their equipment. They would have been able to save a lot of their, you know, destroyed or captured equipment, probably about half of it. They would have, um, for the second point, they would have also saved a lot of their troops, probably about half of it or more. Um, they would have also had a foothold for number three, which, you know, having Stalingrad, that would have been a problem for Stalin. Um, number four is they would have had many resources because they could have captured the Caucasus, and that would have given them the oil fields, giving them enough oil to, you know, pretty much do anything they wanted to do. Um, and number five, they would have had a huge morale boost by capturing, you know, the city that bore Stalin's name. And the Russians would have had a huge um, morale uh, decrease because their city would have been captured by Germans that were invading. So this is going to be the, um, these two, uh, slides are going to be about the battle. So this is going to be the battle part one. So basically Hitler's going to come in and he's going to, um, he's going to, you know, start attacking Stalingrad. He's going to move up all of his troops. Um, but there's like a problem on the flanks. And so what's going to end up happening is the, um, the Germans are going to, you know, they're going to have their allies on the flanks. Well, the Russians are going to see that's the weak point. And they're going to go on those sides and that's going to cause, you know, all their allied soldiers to, you know, get killed or captured. A lot of them are going to like route and they're going to pretty much all run back. And that's going to be all for part one. Okay, so basically following up on part one, this is part two. So after they run back, basically, Army of Dawn is going to try to come up, you know, help. But Hitler's going to order, instead of his, um, his army group, or not his army group, um, instead of Paulus breaking out, he's going to tell him to stay in there, because Goering says that he can get him out. Well, he's not going to be able to, and basically Paulus is going to be starved into surrendering, which is, he's the only field marshal that ever surrendered. So, the main reason that that happened was because Germany underestimated the scale of the Soviet counterattack that was going to happen. And they sent in, you know, 500,000 troops, 900 tanks, 1,400 aircraft. And, you know, the entire German force that was left under Paulus was like 200,000 men. So, you know, it really it did not help them that Paulus didn't break out. He should have broken out. And that would have at least saved him, um, you know, that would have at least saved Hitler, their equipment, and, you know, their troops, about 265,000 troops that he could have actually saved in um, the battle. Alright guys, this is going to be our conclusion. The Battle of Stalingrad turned the tide of the war between Germany and the Soviet Union. General Zhukov, who had played such an important role in the victory, later led the Soviet drive on Berlin. On May 1st, 1945, he personally accepted the German surrender of Berlin. Von Paulus, meanwhile, agitated against Adolf Hitler amongst the German prisoners of war in the Soviet Union, and in 1946 provided testimony at the International Military Tri Tribunal at Nuremberg. After his release by the Soviets in 1953, he settled in East Germany. Alright guys, that's going to um, be the end of our video. I hope you all really like this video. Um, I'm actually going to be coming out with four new ones. One will be coming out on Monday. That'll be about um, a cavalry unit in the Civil War on the Confederate side. And then I'll be coming out with three more in the following weeks. Um, so I hope y'all just like the video. And I hope um, that y'all subscribe, which is the symbol on the slide. Uh, so yeah, just uh, like my video and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.